Hello and welcome to the Tank Ammo Guide for War Thunder. In this video, I'll be explaining all the different types of shells in the game. From the shrapnel shell all the way to the different ATGM types, I'll be giving detailed explanations along with visual guides to help you understand each tank shell in the game. The shells in the game can be split up into two basic groups, kinetic energy and chemical energy. Kinetic energy shells rely on mass and velocity to penetrate the enemy armor. The heavier the shell, the more shrapnel it will produce. The faster the shell, the more armor it can penetrate. Kinetic energy shells can be split up into three groups. Solid AP rounds, high explosive filled AP rounds, and subcaliber AP rounds. Solid AP rounds are the most basic type of ammunition in the game. These shells travel to their target, and once they're inside the enemy tank, they go in a straight line until the shell has no more velocity left. Aiming for weak spots is key when using these shells, since they don't have any post penetration effects besides spalling. All these shells are very similar, the only difference between them being their tips. The armor piercing cap shell is a regular AP shell with a nose cone made out of a softer metal. Due to the cap being softer, the shell will deform once it comes in contact with angled armor. This leads to the AP shell rotating to about the same angle as the armor and then going in. This process is called normalizing. Armor piercing ballistic cap, on the other hand, doesn't help with angled armor, but it makes the shell more aerodynamic. This cap is also made from a soft metal which collapses on impact, so it doesn't help with penetration, but it improves its velocity. This makes this shell capable of destroying enemies at a longer distance. If you can't choose between these two, there's also a third option. Armor piercing cap ballistic capped. Like the name suggests, the APC-BC shell is a combination of the APC and the APBC shell. This shell combines the nose cone of the APC shell and the cap of the APBC shell. When the shell is fired, the APBC cap improves its aerodynamics, thus making the shell faster. Once it comes in contact with armor, the cap collapses and the nose cone rotates the shell so it can go inside the tank easier. All these effects makes the APC-BC shell one of the best all-around shells in the game. In summary, armor piercing shell, armor piercing shell that can handle angles better, armor piercing shell that can be used far away, and armor piercing shell that can be used far away and can go through angled armor. HE filled armor piercing rounds are the same as AP rounds but with one very important difference. They have explosive inside the shell. Once the shell gets inside the tank, the explosives detonate, killing crew members and damaging components along with the shrapnel effects of the standard AP shells. Similar to the solid AP rounds, the APHE shells only differ in their caps. The APHE shells have the same caps as the AP shells and they are on screen now. The best APHE shell in the game is the APHE CVC shell, combining the speed and the normalization of the APCBC shell and the explosive of the APHE shell. In summary, AP combined with HE, APHE combined with APBC, and APHE combined with APCBC. Don't worry, this is the longest combination in the video. Subcaliper armor piercing rounds are small but deadly shells that can go very fast. Since the shells are smaller than regular AP shells, they can be a lot lighter, which means they can go much faster. But the downside of having less mass is not having a lot of shrapnel effect. This means you need to aim for weak spots like ammunition racks or crew members. But since the shells are so small, they can't fit into a regular gun barrel, hence the name Subcaliber. To solve this, these shells have a casing around them, called a Sabo. This way, the shell can fit into the barrel of a tank and still maintain its lightweightness. The APCR shell is the most basic form of a subcaliber round. The core of the shell is made out of a very hard metal, and the sabo is usually made out of a much softer metal. Once fired, the sabo travels with the core to the target. When it comes in contact with the target, the sabo of the shell deforms, allowing the core to go through the armor. Because the energy is being focused on a much smaller area than with regular AP shells, the subcaliber shells can penetrate much more armor. Be careful though, APCR shells are very bad when facing angled armor. Unlike shells with ballistic caps, APCR has almost no normalizing capabilities, so in most cases it will just bounce off when it faces even slightly angled armor. The APDS shell is almost the same as APCR, but with one key difference. The Sabo of the APDS gets discarded once the shell leaves the barrel, hence the name Discarding Sabo. Since the Sabo doesn't travel with the shell, the core is much more aerodynamic and has a lot more velocity, thus more penetration. But just like the APCR round, APDS produces very little shrapnel, so you need to know where to shoot. Unlike APCR however, APDS is much better against angled armor. I still have no explanation for this, other than the balance purposes in the game. If you know why, please leave a comment. 
The final subcaliber AP round is the APFS DS round. This shell is essentially an APDS round that is longer and has fins at the back of it. Just like APDS, the shell discards its sabo after it leaves the barrel. The fins improve the shell's performance over long distances. Since the shell is much longer than the APDS, it creates a lot more shrapnel and post-penetration effects. In summary, small armor-piercing shell with a casing around it, APCR shell that gets rid of the casing after it leaves the barrel, and a longer APDS round with fins. Up next are the chemical energy shells. Instead of relying on massive velocity, chemical energy shells use a chemical reaction to penetrate the enemy armor. Since velocity isn't a factor with these shells, they have the same penetration values over all distances. But since these shells rely on the chemical reaction, they will get detonated when they come in contact with anything, so you need to watch out for trees, fences, and other objects in the way. There are five types of chemical energy shells. High explosive, anti-emplacement, high explosive anti-tank, guided missiles, and utility rounds. High explosive is the most basic form of a chemical energy shell. When it comes in contact with anything, the whole shell combusts, sending pieces of shrapnel everywhere. This shell can be found in almost every single tank in the game, but only large caliber HE rounds are useful against other tanks. There are two variations of the HE shell, High Explosive Time Fuse and High Explosive Variable Time Fuse. High Explosive Time Fuse is useful for anti-air purposes. Instead of exploding after going through a set amount of armor, it explodes after traveling a set distance. The High Explosive Variable Time Fuse is essentially a more modern version of the High Explosive Time Fuse. Instead of traveling a set distance, it explodes once it detects something near it. This way, it is much more effective against aircraft since you don't have to set a distance yourself. There is also the High Explosive Grenade, which is a high explosive shell that is designed to fit special weapons such as recoiled cannons. They are basically the same thing as a high explosive shell, the only difference being that the grenade uses a propellant rather than a charge, which results in a lot less velocity. And the last high explosive round is the rocket. A rocket is essentially a large self-propelled high explosive round. Since it's self-propelled, the rocket doesn't need to be fired from a cannon. Rockets are a lot less accurate than regular rounds though, so you usually need to fire a large amount of them in order to hit your target. In summary, high explosive, H that explodes after a set distance, H that explodes once it detects something near it, a special form of high explosive, and self-propelled high explosive. Up next are the anti-emplacement rounds. These rounds were originally designed to destroy buildings and other emplacements, but in-game, they'll still have some anti tank capabilities. There are two anti-emplacement rounds in the game, Shrapnel and High Explosive Squash Head. The Shrapnel Shell is a thin armor-piercing shell with a bunch of metal and bearings inside along with a small amount of explosive charge. Once it gets inside a tank, the explosives detonate, sending the metal pieces and bearings all around the tank, which causes a significant amount of damage. The only issue is that the outer case of the shell is very thin, so the penetration is mediocre at best. Use this shell against light tanks and anti-air vehicles. Up next is a High Explosive Squash Head. Hesh uses explosives on the inside of the shell and a plastic explosive as a head. Once the shell meets armor, the front of the shell squishes onto the armor, hence the name High Explosive Squash Head. Once the round deforms, the explosives get detonated, which sends a shockwave through the armor, causing the armor on the other side to rupture. This results in metal shards and shrapnel flying inside the tank at high speeds, killing crew members and damaging components. Because of the squash head, Hash actually performs better when it faces angled armor, since the round can spread around more, leading to a bigger shockwave and thus more shrapnel. In summary, round with shrapnel inside that gets released once inside a tank, and round with an explosive head that sticks onto the armor and sends shrapnel inside a tank. The next type of chemical energy shells are the high explosive anti-tank rounds. These rounds use shaped charges to force the copper inside the shell through the tip of the round and into the tank. This results in a very fast jet of molten metal which goes inside the tank at supersonic speeds. While the shell might cause some shrapnel, it mainly goes in a straight line through the tank. So much like APDS, you need to know where you aim. The heat FS round is basically a modern heat round, using meta penetrative chemicals and utilizing fins at the back of the round to improve its ballistics. This means that compared to the heat round, heat FS can penetrate more armor and travel further. This makes heat FS optimal for sniping. The last heat round is a heat grenade. The heat grenade is similar to the high explosive grenade. It is almost identical to the heat round, the only difference being that the grenade uses a propellant rather than a charge, which means the grenade is much slower than the regular heat shell. In summary, round that sends a light of molten metal inside the tank, round that does that better, and a slower heat round. Up next are the guided missiles. 
These missiles are essentially a rocket-propelled heat round they can control. There are five types of guided missiles. ATGM, ATGM Proximity Fuse, ATGM Tandem Charge, ATGM High Explosive, and Surface to Air Missiles. The Proximity Fuse ATGMs are meant for anti-air purposes. Once fired, you can aim the missile at your target and it will explode once it gets near it. The ATGM Tandem Charge, on the other hand, is used for anti-tank purposes. The Tandem ATGMs use a twin-stage warhead to overcome ERA. The first warhead detonates the ERA, which opens the way for the actual ATGM to come in direct contact with the armor. The last type of ATGM is the ATGM HE. This is essentially a rocket I explained previously, but the controllable version. Or in other words, a rocket propelled high explosive round that you can control. And last, but certainly not least, is the surface to air missiles. The SAM is much faster than a regular ATGM and usually has a proximity fuse. These missiles are extremely useful against planes and helicopters since they don't usually have enough time to react to the missile coming at them. In summary, rocket propelled heat round that you can control, ATGM with proximity fuse, ATGM that is good against ERA, rocket propelled HE round that you can control, and a very fast ATGM that is good against air vehicles. And finally, we have the utility rounds. The only utility round in the game is a smoke shell. The smoke shell isn't designed to be used against other tanks, but nobody's stopping you from trying. This shell is basically a high explosive shell, but instead of explosives, it has chemicals that create a large cloud of smoke when detonated. The smoke usually lasts somewhere between 20 and 30 seconds, and can be used to hide your position if you're trying to be sneaky. Thank you for watching. The following footage will be a couple of questions I asked to some of my Discord server members in celebration of 10k subscribers. If you want to join, the link will be in the description. Anyways, roll the footage. So, a skater worker sent me uh, these these questions, so that I have to answer. So, um, yeah. Uh, question one: What do you think about the channel reaching 10k subscribers? Um, I don't really play or watch War Thunder that often. So, uh, um, I mean, g great! It's it's great, great channel, great g congratulations! I think it's a great milestone for a glorious SK Dozier. I mean, a hundred thousand people will finally get your play button. Oh, 10k! Also nice, I guess. Kinda sad now because now I can't mock SK anymore with losing subscribers. What do you think about the channel reaching 10k subscribers? I mean, I've been there kind of from the start, so you know, it's pretty cool. You know, seeing how it's you know grown. You know, our right, next question here. What are your thoughts on the channel itself? It's pretty good. I mean, like takes like four months to post a video that only gets like now 1k max views it's pretty cool pretty cool kind of cringe not gonna lie no omsk therefore it's bad good quality you actually have a mic and internet lmao imagine not being able to use a mic right kgb also great uh, i mean there's there's consistent uploads and Diverse content, it's great, yeah, yeah. Um, question three, are you, you glad you joined the SK Dogger's Discord server? Yes, 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 uh, I am, I'm a mod bear. It's a great community, great people, yeah, co cool and, and stuff. Uh, can I go now? Well... As a wise SK Dozier once said, Sorry, not Hungarian. Getzalot is just a bit of a Down Syndrome. Which reminds me of the SK Dozier mod. That mod doesn't even have Down Syndrome. It died on birth. I have joined the server many times because SK kicked me. Many times. And every time I joined I thought, Bruh. You, fake Belgian. That kind of summarizes my thoughts about the Discord. Yes, ever since my rise of power I can bully mental retards in the server with no consequences. Are you glad you joined the SK Dogers Discord server? There's a lot of America phobia here, you know.
but it's all right. USA, USA, US. Well, that's all the time we've got, I'm afraid. Thank you for participating. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. I want to thank everybody for 10,000 subscribers. When I released Amortize Part 1, I didn't expect to explore views like that, but look at the channel now. Sorry the second part took so long, but hey, the third installment is here. This time, I did a lot more research on how the shells actually work, so I hope you understood the shells. If you have any questions or you notice something wrong with the video, please leave it in the comments. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.